Amen, amen. He is worthy. He is worthy. Uh, that's a good reminder. Um, welcome to the assembly. My name is Pastor TJ, and we have a couple announcements here real quick to get through before we get into some praise and worship. Uh, uh, if you don't know, we have service on uh, Sunday nights at 6 o'clock. Our youth meet as well on Sunday nights at 6 o'clock. Uh, but if you didn't know, uh, Saturday nights, um, I think it's at 5 p.m., 5.30, we have prayer in the sanctuary right here, and it is an amazing time to come in together. If you have not come out for prayer yet, make sure you put on your, your to-do list to come out for prayer. Uh, not that we are needed to do this, but man, this is just a good habit to get into of uh, being together, corporate prayer. Uh, also coming up this Thursday, uh, December 9th, is our Women's Ministries Christmas Party. Uh, it's happening at, uh, I think, 6.30 as well in our activity center. Uh, six six o'clock. And uh, there's a, a gift exchange. And also, I was reminded to let you know that if you are not going to make it and you want to sign up for the 2022 Secret Sister, Sister Secret, Santa, nope, not Santa, just Secret Sister. I don't know. There's a lot of, see Bree, where's Bree at? She's in the nursery. She's in the nursery. Uh, so if you want to sign up for the 2022 Secret Sister um, thing that they do and you're not a part of the Facebook group, make sure you see Bree. She will sign you up. And uh, it's a great way just to connect with the other ladies and, and be a blessing to other women as well. It's a really cool thing. If you haven't been a part of that and there's a table back there, there's always kinds of gifts back there. You're always like, who's that for? Like, is this for me? Nope. Unless you're a woman and part of the secret sister thing, then it's for you. But if you want to join and you're a woman, you can see Bree and uh, she'll hook you up. So it's a great time. So it's six o'clock Thursday for the women's Christmas party. It's going to be a great time uh, for them as well. Also coming up the 11th is our seniors uh, Christmas dinner as well. Uh, if you haven't signed up for that, see Pastor Roger. There's a sign up in the foyer. Yes. 45 people signed up. This is it. We need 50 people. Over 50, 50 people. Or whatever. Anyways, <laughs> I'm going for a hot streak today. Also coming up that same day, sign-ups in the foyer for the women's and the men's. And there's a sign-up in the foyer for the young adults as well. Also, if you have electronics, if you can like digitally, you can sign up as well. That would be the best way to do it uh, on the app or the Facebook page or the website. Young Adults Christmas Party, Saturday at 6 o'clock. I uh, see Terry and Melissa. Melissa's right there. Terry's right here. See one of them to sign up for that as well. So all kinds of stuff coming up. Men's movie night coming up as well on December 16th. Uh, it's called Show Me the Father. It's going to be a fun time in our student center. Um, if you haven't been in there yet, there's a movie theater seats. We're going to have a big, a really big TV and movie theater sound. It's going to be a great time for men uh, to come out and join together and uh, just have a good time that uh, 16th of December at 7 o'clock. And then our church Christmas open house on December 19th. You can find more about that next week, is sure, as well. Um, I think that's all the announcements that I have. Uh, yes, one more. I always miss them. <laughs> next week, Sunday the 12th. Yep. At 10 o'clock. See, I got the date right and the time right. Hey, look at that. You, you work on that. They, they make what these fancy that? phones, I can and you can put everything day. on there, and you can, yeah. One day? <laughs> next Sunday. Pastor TJ is going to be bringing the word in our 10 o'clock service. Okay. Uh, that will be his official last Sunday with us before he takes his new gig. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, we want to be a blessing to him. So after the service, he'll be standing up here. They love hugs, especially Liz. <laughs> yeah, yeah. In fact, she complained that the church just doesn't hug her enough. Uh, but if you want to be a blessing to them, we're Pentecostal church, okay? You just bring a blessing, put it in their hand. They're going to be moving. They're going to have expenses. Uh, you know, uh, we've been really good to them, and they don't know how good that is, but uh, they're going to learn. Uh, so we want, to, we want to send them off right. Uh, not overboard because we don't want them to have enough to come back. We <laughs> Uh, so let's be careful. Oh, it's going to be a great Sunday. Uh, TJ going to bring a powerful word. I believe that with all my heart. Uh, God, God is going to just move through him. He's going to bless our church. Uh, they've been a blessing to us. I want to give you an opportunity to bless them. So that's next Sunday morning. All right? 
Love you all. We're going to have church now. You ready? Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for this day that we have to come and gather in your presence and join together in song and worship. God, it's all about you. God, we just, we love you today and we welcome you in this place. Have your way in our hearts, Lord God. Lord, let your spirit move us. Let your spirit charge us, Father God. Let the fire of your Holy Ghost set up on our heads today, Lord Jesus. We need you, Lord. We need you, Lord. Oh, thank you, Jesus. We give you praise, glory, and honor. Hallelujah. Who am I that the highest king would
Worthy. 
Dare I say we're not ready for that racetrack right now. Are we ready? Are you ready for that racetrack right now? I would like to invite you all to come to the altar area. If you are not, if you want to be race ready, I want you to come to the altar area and let's just lift up the name of Jesus and let him pour into you. He's begging you to be ready. He's begging you to open up and let the Holy Spirit empower you to face what's coming in the days ahead because you are victorious if you are under his covering. We welcome you, Holy Spirit. We welcome you, Holy Spirit.
Is there anyone in the house that needs to be filled with the Holy Spirit this morning? Raise your hand high. We want to pray with you. We want to pray with you, Brother Gail back there. My sister right here, both these sisters, somebody, come on, come on. You spirit-filled people, they want more, they want more. Let's pray with them. Let's pray with them. Sister Linda and uh, Kathy, is it Kathy? I can't think. Bless her heart. And Brother Gail back there. They want more this morning. Come on, come on, come on, people. Come on now. Fill them with the Holy Ghost this morning, Lord God. Fill them with the Holy Ghost this morning, Lord God. Give them direction. Somebody give them direction. Come on now. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Holy Ghost, fall in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. Ask, ask him to fill you. Ask him, God, fill me with your power. Fill me with your Holy Ghost. Lord, that I may have my own prayer language. Fill me this morning, Lord God. Fill me this morning, Lord God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. 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 The desert will never take my song. Oh, the desert will never take my song. And I will praise you. I will praise you. I won't let the stones cry. I won't let the stones cry out. I will praise you.
You, Jesus. Can I uh, leave you with some thoughts here? Isn't God good? You know, a lot of talk about revival. Completing the race. I loved, I love that word. You know, I can, I can get that. And it's going to get quick. But the truth is, if revival broke out like we've seen revival break out before, Brownsville, we're not ready. We can't handle that. I mean, if we asked you to come to church every night of the week, for a week, most of you wouldn't make it. But if it went a month, two months, a year, <laughs> two years, now, I don't know what God's up to. And I think the end time revival is going to be different than any revival we have ever seen. I think 
it's going to happen quick. I think it's going to be a, a race car. I think you're going to see souls just come in. But I'm, I'm of the such that I'm not say a simple prayer. And you get to go to heaven. I think there's more to it. I think we've got to live the life. So I'm urging you to get ready because we're going to need you all. This is the foundation. Come on. I'm pretty sure I can't preach every day. With, but God, come on. If that's the way God wants to do it, we're going to be ready and we're going to go. And you know what? If 100 people are getting saved every night, I'm pretty sure I'm going to have enough energy when I wake up, if I wake up. I think I might just stay awake, that it's going to be okay. If every service somebody getting filled with the Spirit, come on. But, you know, we're human. I just want to challenge you with this this morning. Just thinking about it. We wrap a year up, and if we're not careful... We begin to think of all the things that we didn't get accomplished. Come on, anybody like that? We're worried about how many presents we got for each of the grandkids. Let's see, I think the whole Christmas thing's silly. It messes me up because when I have grandkids with me, we go into the store and we're buying presents right now. And if I got to tell them, no, you can't have a present, Bryson looks at me and says, you don't got no money no more? He don't get it. And I'm like, well, Grandma and Mommy get mad if I buy a present today because Christmas is just a few weeks. So what's it got to do anything? They're not here. <laughs> we reflect on all the problems at the end of the year, the things that we didn't get fixed, the things that we wanted to happen that didn't happen. This morning, God wants you to reflect on this, the promise and not the problem. He promised me that he would take me through. Promised me that he would always be with me. He promised you that those kids that have wandered off, not serving the Lord right now, they're going to come back to it. Amen, Brother Carl? They, that promise holds true this morning. Amen? Or oh, sometimes me, we may wonder, sometimes it may not look good. Promise me that there would always be enough. When I go to the cupboard and open it up, there's always going to be oil in the jar. Come on. Oh, but he goes on and promises me that the windows of heaven will open. Be the head and not the tail. I am more than a conqueror, Brother Gail. If we just start holding on to the promises, see, my time and God's time are different. But he's never let anyone down. He's never quit. You know, I'm reminded of a story, and I think, I think it's 2 Kings 6. I believe it was Elijah the prophet was in trouble. He was hiding out. Soldiers with chariots all around him. And he wakes up and he's got this servant and his servant looks out and he says, we are in trouble. Every place I look, I look all around and I, the enemy's got horses and chariots and soldiers every place. What are we going to do? But Elijah says, sit down. God gave us a promise. He said he'd always be with us. And he prays. And he looks at the servant and says, look again, because God said there's always going to be more of us than there is them. And the servant looked back out. He saw chariots of fire. All over, there was more. 
there is more of us. Might not look like it this morning. There's more of us than them. You're not seeing it because you're looking through your physical, natural eyes. And God's inviting you to a new place where you can see the supernatural. You see, in a matter of an instance, the situation changed because instead of seeing what the world saw, the servant was able to see what God saw. And as a church, we need to get to the place where our perspective changes and we say, you know what? I'm going to see what God sees. Oh, you see, I see trouble. I see sickness. I see brokenness. I see lack of hope. I see a government that's messed up and taken us places we probably shouldn't be going as a country. But if I look in God's eyes, He's got us covered. This is a great nation. Come on. This is a great nation that we live in. Believe it or not, we have the favor of God upon us. Oh, it might not look like it right now, but I ain't looking through your eyes and my eyes. I'm looking through God's eyes. And he says, this is a place I can have revival. This is a place that I can change. This is a place where there is freedom. You see, I love David. And David went to the battlefield that day. And he was surrounded by soldiers. Supposed to be men of God. Israelites. Trained to fight. And they were all afraid of one man. But David says, I don't see what you see. I'm not alone. And you know what? I'm pretty good with a slingshot. And they done went and picked the biggest guy. Out of the you see how big his head is? I couldn't miss his head if I wanted to. But better than that, I got a promise from God that I'm more than a conqueror. Amen. He's no match for me. He's not of God. We're small. We got a city to win. In our eyes, we can become overwhelmed. But you know, just two weeks ago, God filled the place up. And it wasn't that hard. In fact, who was here? It was fun. Come on. We gave probably $8,000 worth of food away. I still had money left over to eat lunch. Come on. Quit looking through your own eyes. See what God sees. He sees a city in trouble. He sees a city lost. And he says, I selected by hand. Before they were, I picked them out and I put them together. Come on, that ought to excite you. I got old oil filters. I got electric workers. I got housewives. I got stinkers. That's what we used to call troublemakers in the day. I'm a little older than I look. I've got them all put together. And I've surrounded them by fire. Come on. And there's more than enough of us to rip through that city and tear it apart. And you know what? He's going to make it easy. That's what the promise said. You're going to throw out there and the fish are just going to come. 
They're going to bite like they never bit before. You're going to reel them in. There's going to be six and eight every time. The nets are going to break. When? Now, if we get ready. Now, if we quit looking at the problems and we look at the promise, that's what he promised. He said, from the north to the south, the east to the west is ours. He said, lay the stakes. I drove it. I've laid the stakes. It's ours when now. How do I know now? Because this is when he's established us. I don't see any problems anymore. No. We run right through the problems. Run right over them. Trample them a little bit. Because they of the devil. I see a promise. This is our city. This is our time. How do we get there? Look at the promise get God's perspective see there's the Pentecostal part pray when 1 Thessalonians 5 6 says rejoice always pray without ceasing and everything gives thanks for this is the will of God in Jesus Christ for you and get this God's will is for me to pray all the time driving down the road sitting on the toilet eating supper all the time should have an attitude of pray. I love talking to Ray. You know why? I was praying for you today. I was, it's all the time. Not just one day, any day I talk to him. I'm praying for you today. We've got to have that heart where we need to talk. It's his will. And then he sealed it with the Lord Jesus Christ. With the cross. He sealed it. Pray all the time. Rejoice about it and give thanks. Keep in mind that the promise is always greater and the promise is bigger than you. It's not natural. It's supernatural. God promised you that he's going to turn your finances around. Find a bigger bank. I'm serious. God promised you that he's going to give you your health back. Get ready to do things that you had never done before because it's supernatural, not natural. Quit limiting God. You know, once I was in church with a man and his hands were so bad he couldn't grip anything. He could hardly move them. You tell he was in pain. I said, man, let's go to the altar and let God get a hold of that. You know what he told me? God heals me. I don't have a job. I'm on disability and I'll lose my disability. I thought, what faith? He got no doubt. Wish I had that faith that no doubt I can be healed. But the promise is God's going to take care of you. If he heals you, he'll provide. Your God is not broke. Quit limiting him. He's going to make it better than it is. He's going to take you to a new level. He's tired of, of this level. It's a growth process. And you know what? When you go to this level, don't get comfortable. You're going to go again, and you're going to go again. The only thing that's going to stop it is you. The promise is always greater than you. Romans 8 and 11 says the same power that raised Jesus from the dead is the same power that dwells within me. Oh, You know what the devil would do if you really got that? He'd probably roll over and just quit. He said, I remember that day and I remember it well. He came to my house. He came to my house when he got up out of that grave and he took from me what I thought was mine. 
and he put me in his place. That same power. Devil, leave him alone. You're messing with the wrong guy. I'm packed and loaded. Be positive. Why is it Christians are the most negative people? As pastor, I can issue edicts and I got to follow them, right? Somebody be negative, you just smack them right side the head. No, never mind. Get this. God's people ought to be the most positive people. There are. There should be no negative. He's for me. Who can be against me? Come on. I've got more than enough. It may not look like it right now. I don't even have my wallet with me. But I'm sure when I find it, it'll be more than enough. Come on. We're in trouble. Then. Come on. Be positive. You know, positive builds other people. Negative tears yourself down and them down. Last, expect God's provision. We worked at the machine shop. Bob would often take us out to eat. Went to Hobbs with him. I looked at the menu and thought, my goodness, I'm going to get a salad. This place is expensive. I ordered something and went to the restroom. When I got my meal, it was a 16-ounce ribeye. thing was about that big and about that thick. Never seen a ribeye that thick. I had potatoes, and I said, ma'am, this isn't my order. And she said, he ordered for you. You're on his provision tonight. Now get this. Some of you are living on your own provision. Some of you are living on the government provision. Some of you don't even know where it's coming from. But you're living like you're on welfare. Can I just go ahead and say that? And God's saying, look. This is my revival. This is my time. I paid the price at the cross. It's been taken care of. From my, here on, go on my provision. I'm going to pick up the tab. Get this. If I pray for folks, like I'm praying on God's provision, not my provision, my prayer just became a lot more powerful because there's a lot more back to that prayer than what am I going to do if God doesn't, come on. If I plan, I'm not saying be stupid. If I plan and say, God, we're going to do this for you. Pastor Mike. Just tell this story. This Thanksgiving, this is fresh for us. Pastor Mike comes to me and says, let's do a turkey giveaway. We can probably give two, 300 turkeys away, get those families in there and have church with them. Okay. Now, if as pastor I thought, well, that'd be real good. We get three, 400 people in the church. They're going to make a mess of things. All chairs are going to be out of place. Carpet's going to be dirty. We're going to use a lot of toilet paper. And that food's going to cost us $8,000. And I got to pay for it all. You know, I'm going to tell Mike, Pastor Mike, no, we can't do that. But I wasn't worried about me providing or the church having to provide. I knew that it was a God thing, and if it was a God thing, we would go on God's ticket. In March, give you. Thanksgiving ain't until November. God didn't want us worrying about God sent $5,000 
in March. From California. You get the difference? It's time to take the limits off. It's time to pray about it, and if God says do it, do it. Oh, you say, Pastor, you don't know what God's talking to me about. 36, God calls me to be a kid's pastor. I'm 36 years old. Get it? I'm too old to be a kid's pastor. I don't like kids. It's just like my own. Doesn't sound like a smart thing to me. I got a decent job. I got some headaches, but I'm making good money. I got horses. They take a lot of time. God gave them to me. I can't do this. Oh, what are they going to pay you? Less than half. What are you making now? Mama, sell the barn. This won't work. But you know what? I knew God was in it. And I knew that he would provide. I kept my company car for a year and a half after I quit. And I charged gas on their card. I don't know if they ever figured that one out or not. Why? I was on God's ticket. He gave me a promise that it was going to be okay, that this is, this is what we got to do, and we did it. Come on. Second Chronicles 20 and 15. Jehoshaphat, this is what the Lord says. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged by this mighty army, for the battle is not yours, but it is God's. Amen. We're fixing to fight the biggest battle that you've ever seen spiritually. It's going to happen because all hell's going to break loose and the devil's going to come hard at us. Don't let it frighten you. Don't become discouraged. Don't quit because it's not our battle. He's sending chariots of fire, angels, to battle in front of us and behind us and beside us. And what are we to do? Give praise. You know, I thank God that we gave $8,000 worth of turkeys and potatoes and corn and green beans a couple of weeks ago. I thank God for it because I know it was all God. Second Kings 6 and 16. Do not fear, for those who are with us are more than those who are with them. kind of go like this. Devil, I'm getting ready to kick your butt. I'm going to smack you around and pick you up and smack you around some more. And then while you're down, I'm going to jump on you and stomp on you. And I'm going to enjoy every moment of it. I'm not going to be nice about it because if I fight, I fight to win. You don't want to get me in one. But I want in this one. And you know what? You ain't going to get up until I tell you to because there are more of us than there is of use. And I brought the guy that never lost a battle. Every time he stood up against you, he has won. I got a ringer. to stand up and say enough's enough. I'm tired of the mess. I'm tired of reading the news and seeing all the trash that goes on in our city, in our country. I'm tired of hearing 
how stupid the decision our government makes. I'm sorry, but I'm not sorry. Just said that for the, yeah. Here's what I'm sorry for. Sorry that we didn't catch it quicker. We didn't grab the promises harder. Shouldn't be any sick among us. It's the promise. Should be a place where there's always more than enough. Come on. Praying 2022, we give more money, more food away than all the other years of our existence. Correct me if I'm wrong, but for many years I gave busloads of food away every month. I'd fill that old bus up and we'd go give it away right out the back door. I ain't never seen anybody give food away like Terry gives it away. I mean, you know, if there's any other pastors listening, don't give the biggest guy in your church the job of the food pantry. Come on. I love it. I love it. So, I need you to go someplace with me today. We're moving past the problems. We're focused on the promise. Number one, this is our city. Two, there's always going to be more than enough. You see, if we're not careful, we, we always say there'll be enough. But the promise is there'll be more than enough. The bounty says that the barn isn't big enough for what God's going to supply us with. Now, your job is to see where you fit because you fit because you're here. Everybody's needed. I'm looking back there, I see Rita. And I love the fact that every time I look around, it's pictures every place. You know why? It's a testimony. When we give them food away, she's getting pictures of it. And the generation next and next and next is going to have a testimony and say, look what that crazy pastor did. That is nuts. But we're going to do more. We all have a part. The flowers look beautiful in the front. And you know what? That will cause people to come. I had a lady tell me once, as she's taking her last breaths, you know why I came to your church? I love the purple carpets. I thought, But you know what? If a purple carpet gets her here, we'll leave it there for a few more days. <laughs> You're all needed. Promise says this is our city. Promise says this is our time. It's now. Promise says the cross took care of it all already paid for in full. Let's go. I don't want to see a drug addict, an alcoholic, a prostitute, and I'll keep going if you want me to, but I think you get the idea. Safe in our city because we're going to turn the church loose on them, and God's going to get a hold of them. They're going to be changed. Come on. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for this wonderful service. God, I thank you for showing up. God, I thank you for, for sending a word directly from heaven. Yeah. 
And God, I'm thankful for the people that got filled with the Holy Spirit today because now they're loaded and they have power. God, I thank you for the ones that got recharged. God, but this morning, I thank you for the promises that you've given us in this year, 2021. And God, I call them for now. I say we are moving on them. God, that there's always going to be more than enough. God, that this will be a house of hope, a house of healing. And God, that souls are going to come flying in. They're going to jump out of the water. And God, this is our city. This is our time. You are with us. There's more of us than the devil has. We claim victory in Jesus' name. Amen. Remember, Pastor TJ be preaching next week. But if you're going to stay ready to race... You can't just get the car out on race day. You work on it all the time in between races. You got to get in your word. Because if you don't know the promise, you can't stand on the promise. You got to pray without ceasing. And you know, we are blessed with a wonderful praise and worship.